Whoops, there we go. Ah, getting a little crazy here. Welcome to Camp Patton Family Compound, folks. It's time for Friday night on the homestead. And I hit the wrong one. I hit the hit the Monday night one there beforehand. Oh well. Tonight's topic is bugs. And I got bugs in my computer right now. So how's everybody doing? <laughs> yeah, I went, I just realized that I hit the Monday night. I am so out of sorts here. All right, let's let's get welcome everybody in here at least. Uh, all right, so first one in was Phelan Clan Wolf. He votes for starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. Walt Rogers came in. Uh, Aiden Ear, Kaylin Strain. Uh, it's the Marshmallow Man. Hey, Lewis. Wendy at Hardnack Farms. Rebel Canner. Hey, Tammy. And that's where we're sitting at right now. And right now we're sitting at four people saying, yes, change the time. And one person saying, no, keep it the way it is. So, yeah. Anyways, yeah, I'm thinking about changing both. Uh, my Okay, Tuesday on Gray Man Prepping is at 10 o'clock. I'm thinking about changing it as well, bringing it up to 6 o'clock. Well, 6 o'clock my time, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Um, same thing for here. Uh, just one of those things I was uh, thinking about uh, doing here. Uh, a lot of the comments, you know, you know, you know, uh, people watching afterwards because, you know, the next morning because they they had already gone to bed. So um, that's one of the things I want to uh, think about doing to try to help everybody out. Oh, and so, but over on the community tabs, there's a uh, there's Several more saying to uh, change it up. Some of those will not be in here because they've already gone to bed. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah. All righty. So tonight's. Uh, well, if you haven't voted, please vote it yes or no to moving it up up two hours from ten o'clock Eastern to eight o'clock Eastern. All right. Now let's get on with the uh, stuff here. Bugs, good, bad, and the ugly. Let me go here first. So um, today I was out rotor tilling, and I, I'm going to put. I, I, it's been doing some of the videoing for it, but I've been. Uh, I burnt off the two and a half acres, uh, a lot of the weeds off of it. Um, they didn't burn completely because some areas it was really already the green stuff was already coming up, and it wouldn't burn. And uh, the dead stuff all burnt off and everything else. But as I'm going around rotor tilling, I go along and also I hit an area and it's just like, it's like I, I walk into a, uh, into a cloud of gnats. It's little black nasty gnats. And it's like, oh, and I go for about, you know, 50 feet and all of a sudden they're gone. Ah, cool. Go around and hit another area and be like that. And the thing is, it wasn't the same. Some areas, it was when I was going through the uh, rotor tilling, the lush green stuff under, and other areas around is where I was rotor tilling the dry stuff under. So who knows what the uh, cause of the uh, gnats were, where they where they were at, and uh, so yeah, so that's uh, so that's another type of bug out there, and I know uh, there are type of uh, that gnats um, can you know. That what they called specifically. Um, there's a type of gnat that's usually what we have around here that's in with the uh, uh, the uh, composting material and stuff, and they're eating. They're below ground. That you know they they they, they burrow down and they uh, lay eggs. Them they come up and they fly around and annoy everybody. But uh, yeah. It's you know interesting you know the different and these the ones that were outside there are the same ones I have inside that show up occasionally here so who knows all right so let's get back to this all right so oh we got a whole bunch of uh, different bugs here well are all these bad are all these good. Actually, let me drop those. Drop this down for our gardeners here that want to come up. There's the link for the gardeners. 
and you guys can help help me uh, figure through this. Bought pineapples and brought them home. Yeah. Um, my grandmother used to, whenever she'd buy pineapples at the store, she'd bring them home and she would have, uh, she'd get a big pot of scalding water and dip the pineapples in there first and, you know, kill any bugs that are on it. And I know she didn't leave it in there very long. Just like, like just stick it in there, dip it in, turn, spin it around 30 seconds or so, pull it out and then toss it in the fridge. I don't know. What all that did for it, I never did ask her. I wasn't thinking to ask her, was that help peeling it or anything else or just kill, killing the gnats? All right, so these are just some of the bugs. This is from you know, the Encyclopedia Britannica. But um, some of these, um, remember right here, go to the next one. Okay, that lace wing, okay, that's a different one. Is that lace wing? Let me go back. Uh, lace bug versus. All right, so you got a lace bug versus a lace wing. So these are the beneficial ones, the predators. Now, the aphid predator, um, basically, uh, you know, the, you know, I'm not sure if that's a, a, just a single pair dragonfly wing or uh, whether it's all dragonflies. I think all dragonflies are good. Bananas are bad for bugs here. Lace wings are amazing. Yeah, I know that I've read about them, uh, you know, taking out uh, certain uh, pests and stuff. I don't see the, uh, mm, I don't see the little wasp. There's another little wasp that, uh, oh, here's Lewis. Hey, hey Lewis. how's it going? All right. I've heard several uh, uh, channels talking about a wasp and stuff, and I actually looked it up before, and I totally forgot about it this time. Uh, but there's a little wasp that'll, um, that lands on certain, you know, other pests, and, you know, uh, when they sting, it kind of kind of immobilizes it for a little while, and they lay eggs in it, and then it goes back to doing it soon. All of a sudden, the, uh, the eggs hatch, and it just kind of, you know, mm -hmm. And you know, it kills them off. Yeah, there's a bunch of bugs flying around my garden right now. Well, yeah, I don't know about right now, but during the day they are. Yeah. Um, I did find when I was moving stuff around um this spring. <laughs> Uh, boards and stuff that were outside, a bunch of praying mantis egg things, cocoons, whatever they're, whatever they're called, or crystals, whatever they're called, where they you know lay all their their eggs. I found several of them that were from this from last fall, and so I carefully set them in, in, in areas and stuff so that when they hatch out, the uh, the babies will be protected and will. Uh, won't, there won't be uh, predators against the praying mantis getting to that um, that chrysalis egg sac, whatever the heck it's called. Uh, Wendy says you can purchase these beneficial bugs from Abrico Organics. Cool. All right. So I want to Abrico Organics. Hang on. I'm just going to put something up here real quick. Go organics. Okay, I got that set aside to pull up later. All right, but um, I mean, the mites are, you know, you know, it's hard to tell which mite is a good mite. Like this is a predatory mite and there's other ones which are bad. Ladybugs or lady beetles. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, we know those. Mealy bug destroyer. All right. Minute pirate. Cool. White fly parasite, I've heard of those. So now we got some bad ones here. All 
I thought when I came up here to the snow country and everything else, I would not see sow bugs or earwigs. And we still get them all over the place up here. Ugh. Plus, now we get um, box elder bugs. Yeah, I think right. some of these bugs, they determine on what you got in your backyard, whether it's a garden or not. Um, like you were saying about the boards, right? And that. Yeah. Some some bugs are just just attracted to, to to some things like say boards. Some might be attracted to uh, uh, wood. Some might be attracted to some stuff, right? And they're just there nearby. Yeah. Well, uh, aphids. Um, I've heard people around here complain about aphids up here. Aphid winged. That's uh, probably just the, you know, when they're when they're spreading around. Bagworm larvae, never heard of that one. Bill bug, haven't heard of that one. Cucumber beetle, I have heard of that one. Um, I think that's. I think I've only seen those down. I don't think I've seen any around here yet, but I've know that they're from down in, in California. Got a different a uh, cyclamen uh, cyclamen mite. There's another one. Yeah, earwigs. I hate those suckers. Fungus gnat. Adult. Hmm. I wonder if that's another name for the ones that live underground and stuff, in in the in the in the potting soil and stuff. You got a fungus uh, gnat larvae. Oh, uh, the one thing I did find out is uh, I got peppermint oil. I got a big eight ounce bottle of peppermint oil because uh, to try to chase off the uh, the field mice and the voles from around the house across the street. And um, I had a little spray bottle. I sprayed some on the uh, on the soil in my indoor garden, and it chased a lot of the gnats away from there for a little while. I'm gonna have to spray some more on there, but uh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Lace bug. I'm not sure about that lace bug because that's not the the other one, the lace wing one. Mealy bug. Hang on, mealy bug. Okay, you got that mealy bug there. Let me go back one. What was the one here? Hmm. It was on. Okay. Oh, bug. No, okay. I thought there was one saying that somewhere about eight me mealy bugs. Rose chaffer. White flies, yeah. The white grub. I usually see the white grub in wood and stuff. Sow bugs, see those all over the place. Uh, I tell the kids, I tell the grandkids they can play with them. When they're then playing with them, squish them. Spider mite. Sp splinter bug. Thrips, thrips. I think that's how it's pronounced. I don't see the one that I really, you know, I'm going to be. I'm worried about because what I'm growing this year. I don't see the um, the cabbage moth on here. Potato bugs are another one. Yeah, and then of course there's a squash bug that's in the south um, southeast. I've, you know, we've never had. Uh, Squash bugs in California. No one up here has squash bugs, so we're lucky on that one. It seems to be um, regional or yes, no, some bugs will be. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, some bugs will stay in in certain areas of the world, and some bugs will stay in other parts of the. Uh, some world. some go wherever they can go. Yeah. Well, as you say here, my state of Francesca in high school, we flicked box elder bugs across the room. Yeah. Well, I found out that uh, something about the box. We got box elder bugs around here bad. I found out that box elder bugs only go to the female box elder 
tree, not the male box elder tree. And so the box elder tree we have across the road there is a female one. And so it's going to, uh, we'll work on slowly taking it down a limited time, branches, thinning it out, and uh, cleaning yeah. up all the debris from it. Yeah, we. Uh, I just had last summer had an ass tree cut down and it had a beetle in it. Mm -hmm. Across the street just had like six or seven ass trees cut down due to the same thing, the beetle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know with pine and I froze. I know with pine trees, um, when uh, the beetles that live around pine trees and stuff, so long as there's good water and rain season for and there's and the and the pines are able to produce a lot of sap, they force the uh, the the beetles that bore into the pines out. So they start to bore in, and the sap just kind of pushes them out. When it, in a drought year, it doesn't have that sap, that high flow of sap. And so they get in and they start eating. They get, they get inside the pine tree and they kill it. But uh, now the one pest here, or bug, it's not a bug, but it's a pest. When I saw rotor tailing out across the street uh, street there, Man, I was I was just chasing down um, voles left and right over them. It was it was like Grand Central Station for voles. And unfortunately, when running the rotor tiller, the cats will come out there. If I'm just running the one tractor to pull in the disc, the cats will come out. But with the rotor tiller, you know, making another sound, the cats don't like going around there. And I was, I was chasing up voles all over the place, and if the cats would come around when I'm rotor tilling. Oh, they'd be they'd be fat cats right now. Yeah, we got those around here too: moles, mice, rats. Uh, I don't know what they are, but they're of that family. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is um, for moles and voles, it's easy to tell what they uh, you know if it's a if it's a vole, it's a vegetarian. It, it eats plants. If it's a mole, it eats the bugs, the grubs, the worms, and all that other stuff. And the easy way to remember that is, you know, V is for vegetarian, M is for meat eater. You know, one of the things we're trying to do this year is trying to um, trying to get away from uh, the harsh chemicals and stuff totally. I did find some cool stuff. Let me switch things up here. And I know there's, um, bring this over here. Um, there are several things that uh, I've gotten to help to, uh, to get rid of certain, if not, yeah, whatever, obnoxious weeds. There we go. Got my mouth working. And certain pests. The, You can make a solution with the um, Dawn dish soap. We'll get certain um, pests and stuff. The Other blue. ones, if you, if they're not on the plants, you can add vinegar to it, and it'll um, help kill the pests. But if you spray it on the plants, it's going to hurt the plants. And for certain weeds... You can uh, you mix vinegar, salt, and a little and, a, and like a two tablespoons per gallon of Dawn or one tablespoon per, one tablespoon per, per gallon of Dawn dish soap to it, and um, it takes out. It's supposed to work on you know killing certain plants and grasses and stuff. However, they all say to use yeah go you know or it's not okay. Most of them say yeah you get the vinegar you buy at the store you know, the one gallon jugs you mix it up. Yeah, it only works so so. And then uh, this year, I saw someone mention, don't get the standard five percent you get like at Sam's Club or or Costco, whatever, or Walmart. You go over to the cleaning section, you get the ten percent vinegar. And um, so, I I I realized, okay, all right. So if ten percent is better than five percent. 
Then um, let me go ahead and put that up there and open that another one. Okay. And then then this. So where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Different page. Go back, go back. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, did they get that that far back? Why is it not showing up in my orders? Uh, where is it? Okay. In that case, I'm gonna go. Ha I'm gonna have to go to the weed control. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> This is what I got to help take care of certain bugs and, and weeds. 45% vinegar. And considering all that, all that can do is help the soil anyways. So, but yeah, so I got the, uh, 45%. I got, I got, actually, I got a four pack of it. Um, and actually, I think, uh, I think I got this one here, this four pack here from Be uh, Bell Chemical. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, I got the four pack one because it was cheaper for the four pack. So I'll be, I'll be trying that. But the other thing I've gotten is the mole. And full repellent also repels gophers, and I put that around in the in the fall around the lawn, and around my trees, the new trees that they like killing, and it seemed to have worked this last year. So I didn't I I, I haven't seen all the vol trails out uh, out in the lawn like I did last year, or um, like I'm seeing across the street out in the out in the uh, the fields and stuff. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous how many, you know, all the, it's like, you know, the, the vol population went up by um, 2,000%. Just ridiculous over there. Now, for uh, the pests and stuff, spe specifically the cabbage moth, someone recommended I get some, uh, some tool fabric. And I ordered some. I ordered the uh, 54 inches by 40 yards of it. And in some of the raised planter beds, uh, the IBC totes, um, I'm going to transplant a couple of the um, the cabbages I'm growing indoors. I'm going to transplant them outside, and I'm just going to cover the whole thing and make a little A-frame on it. Just cover it with a tool so the cabbage moths and any, any of the other bugs can't get into it. And for fifteen dollars, I mean, I think it's going to be a, a, is a good uh, thing uh, to work on. Hey, check the stuff. How's it going? Yeah, we did. All we had in California was gophers. We didn't have the voles. We didn't have the moles. We just had gophers, and we know how to how to get rid of the gophers. Up here, the voles are just like mice, and these they're everywhere, and it's like dang. Yeah, it'll make a good, good, a good salad dressing. It also makes it that uh, that um, vinegar also makes a good cleaner for the Dutch ovens that have gotten rusty to, to get all the rust off of them, so I can re-season them. Works a lot better than the five percent or ten percent. You put that uh, forty-five in there, and you can start working on it within an hour to uh, scrub stuff off. So, uh, so I've got the, I got the. Uh, the white uh, tool to put out there. Uh, I've got another one of these if I need to spread a little bit more around my garden area. And I got that to get rid of the, I got, you know, I may order another one here to kill off the, uh, the weeds uh, that are encroaching from the, uh, the, the, the city's right away between my fence and the pavement. It's about, 12 feet of, uh, you know, I mow it, but still I get, get the um, other weeds growing in there. And with some of the weeds, hey, Mark, how's it going? 
uh, some of the uh, weeds bring bad bugs, it seems. I may need to make some changes in the garden to deter the voles. Yeah, they, they, um, the, uh, the voles are bad on the surface around the irrigation ditches. And here, it's the mice that uh, in the wintertime, they'll dig down deep around the, the irrigation uh, gates and stuff and cause leaks. Yeah, they've. Uh, if you got a boulder foundation in your house, they'll dig right through that too. Yeah, well, th uh, this house here is is all concrete down, concrete footings going down several feet, and um, haven't seen any mice, you know, there. Oh, but that's a different the, story. That is a different story. Yeah, across the street, most of that house built in uh, 1903 is on block, uh, not blocks, bo little boulders of uh, basalt with mortar together. And some of them, uh, some of them are, react they react to the mortar and they start breaking down. And, you know, and there's you see the mice come in. And here's Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, it's a little late, but I was like, oh, crap, I'm missing it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, it's, you know, the, the, um, and of course, when the um, the mice get in the, into the house across the street, the uh, garter snakes find the mice hole. And they come into the basement, and then the spiders come in, and some of the uh, some other bugs come in too. It's like, yeah. So we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get with uh, them over there. All right, we're gonna go around, and all that stuff you piling up against the side of the house. We're gonna pull it out. We're gonna level the dirt off again. And we're going to keep it clean so you can see any signs of mice or something out there and um, keep them from going in there. Because my daughter in the one area tried to do, a, started digging it up to put in a, uh, a garden, but it's like, uh, I know, I, I'm, prob I'm, I'm pretty sure I know where the, uh, where the mice are, are coming into the house now. Yeah, I can almost guarantee it too. So, so I, had a, I had a problem with ants at my cabin yes and i found the best thing at first i didn't think it worked it's technically all natural it was borax like this you buy it at lowe's i mean it's laundry booster it's just borax yeah and sugar and use domino sugar don't use the gmo stuff but use domino sugar and water and you make you, you warm water you make it into like a like a, it, it makes like a clear liquid, but it's thick and viscous. I put yeah. it in a mason jar, put a lid and cap on it, and poked holes just above the water line, and I laid them sideways where I thought the ants were. A week later, I didn't see anything. Two weeks later, the jar was full. Yeah. And they're gone. I was like, wow, I like this. Yeah. Uh, that's one I haven't tried yet. I have used the... Uh Sprayed the vinegar into the uh, into the, or just poured it straight down the ant holes, and it took two days, and the ants went went away. However, with this, that was with the five percent. With the forty five percent vinegar, I got. I'm I'm just going to go over there and just you know, it'll probably just take a little bit, and it's be so strong, it'll just you know chase them out or kill them. Yeah, I don't want to chase them out. I want them dead. Yeah. Yeah. If you're looking for same day results, like within five minutes, I got away. What's that? Gas and light them. <laughs> yeah, great. Just not against. Just not inside my cabin. <laughs> They were yeah. in the cabin. They were like literally going through that new pink, uh, the uh, insulation. Yeah. yeah, but it was the new pink that you you know it's very safe. But for some reason, they must like it because I was finding bits of fiberglass puffs on everything every time I came to the cabin. Yeah, rock wall yeah. is something I was I was thinking about getting for the shop till I priced it out, and it's like yeah. holy crap, that's expensive. 
it's a, it's a little more than the other stuff, but I'll deal with the ants instead of the extra price for Rockwell. Yeah. What's neat about the rock, rock the the uh, rock wool? It's uh, it's pretty much fireproof. Oh, the the, one of the ant eaters. <laughs> The yeah, problem is the ant eaters also dig up stuff. They they eat a ferocious amount of ants, more than what we have growing around here. I mean, those the ant hills those, those guys tear into are the ones that stand about five feet tall and go down about you know fifteen feet, and they just start digging in there and just start eating smorgasbord. And the ants I had weren't the big ones; they were like sugar ants, mm -hmm. and they're in the woods. They're in the middle of nowhere. There was nothing there when I first built the cabin. We made the platform. We stacked all the supplies on the platform and covered up with the tarp, all the two by fours. When I came back and I pulled the tarp off, like three weeks later, th there were ants and eggs in between all the pine boards. I was like, "Oh my god, really?" Yep. And that's when my problem started. And I was I bought some pesticide ant spray, sprayed it underneath. That didn't help. Yeah. I don't have um, chicken. I don't have chickens yet. <laughs> <laughs> you got any maple trees nearby? That no, cabin? Mostly, there's, there's like I think there's like two sugar maples, but they're like you know thirty yards away. The rest are all pine trees and oak trees, and some walnut trees. And well, the pine trees, believe it or not, um, are there's a big pine tree over there. Fine, it finally died. And I think I, I got my suspicions on why it died, but uh, there were the black and red ants all around the base of it. They just seem. They just seem to love the base of all that pine stuff coming down, and they were just all over it there. And well, that might so, be it because I got I got white pines everywhere. Yeah. <clears throat> Up here in Canada, the ants, the sugar um, ants or whatever, will get a hold of a, a maple tree and just bore out the middle of it to the point where one of us could just jump in the middle of it if the tree was old enough. Jeez. Oh, yeah. All right. We looked it up. Short answer, yes. Chickens do eat ants, along with grasshoppers, caterpillars, spiders, worms, and other type of insects. But unfortunately, they don't eat enough to uh, serve as your primary method of pest control. And if you happen to have uh, some good Rhode Island Reds and you want to have some fun and you got tomatoes and you get tomato hornworms, pick off the tomato hornworms and toss them into a group of chickens and video it. <laughs> okay, the other one looked here was... Uh, Okay, here we go. I was looking at the one that, uh, um, okay. Oh, $5 off your first order. Not now. All right, so beneficial insects. Uh, this is the one that uh, Wendy was talking about that you can get. You can get the green uh, lace wing, praying mantis, uh, mite predators, ladybugs. Specialist predators, ah, uh, some of the wasps, yes. General purpose predators, moth egg parasites, yes. Cool. All right. I'm going to have to save this and bring it over here. And where's garden, garden, garden? <laughs> Uh, save. Come on, come on, come on. I know, I know I got praying mantises out of the property because I've seen egg sacs hanging from little tiny bushes and stuff. And I leave those bushes alone because I know only about 10% of the praying mantises survive. The birds get most of them. Yeah. And I got there we go. Got it saved. I got hundreds of bluebirds that love my field and they make nests in the trees there and they used to buzz me when I was cutting the field 
So I got to make bluebird boxes before I start pushing all the trees down. Um, do you have bats around there? I don't know. That's something I did. I did notice here in the um, Southeast Idaho uh, Hobby Farms Facebook page. Um, uh, there's several boxes. people ma making bat making and selling bat boxes. I don't need to and, buy one. I'll I'll make one. Yeah, but I'm saying, but I'm saying, you know, you know, if they weren't, if we, we if we didn't have the bats around here to take care of the mosquitoes, they wouldn't be making bat boxes. So, right. logically speaking, tells me, yeah, if I put up some bat boxes around, I may get some uh, bats. For some reason, I don't have a lot of mosquitoes down there. I get a couple, but not like when I used to go camping in Maine and stuff where they would just like attack you. Well, there, you may have you may have a, 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 a big population of bats around there somewhere. Oh, good. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll put up bat boxes and help them out. I know the blue the bluebirds eat every bug they can find. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see if I can look this up here. Um, okay, got that one, and I'm bringing something else up here for you guys. Here, give me a second here. Words. Okay, what was the other one? Um, oh, ladybugs. Look in here, folks. Okay, so praying mantises. Um, I think this this one here was the one that uh, this company you know, has this little bucket here. Joe had gotten that bucket looks very familiar for praying mantises, but yeah, I have the ones uh, these these little egg things all over the place here, and so hopefully I'll get even more next year. And I have both green and uh, what do I want to call it? Um, brown. Yeah, lighter than brown, almost like a tan. Yeah. That's usually. I think there's only one because I know the the green ones. I've seen the I've seen the pregnant female ones, and then the males. I think the males turn brown after they well when after a prey mantis eat mates. The female usually just like eats the head off of them, so that's besides yeah. the point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a praying mantis puppet. I wonder if that'll work out there. Yeah. <laughs> Put a praying mantis puppet out there, and I'll go. Oh, it's a giant praying mantis. We're gonna leave. My my wife my wife bought uh she bought praying mantis eggs like two two sacks of it one year when when I lived in another town. And she bought them in, I think, January or February. And she left them in the kitchen drawer. And then I get this screaming phone call at work going, uh, we have a problem. There were like thousands of praying mantises inside my kitchen cabinets. Hanging upside down like bats. I did everything I could. I took every drawer out. I scooped them nicely and brought them outside. And it felt bad. I had to vacuum up probably a couple hundred of them because I couldn't get them out. I'm like, yeah, wow, that's a lot of praying mantises out of that egg sack. Yep. Don't leave them inside. Yeah. If you do, put them in a jar with a very small hole in the top. Yeah. Or just put get, get a, like a gallon jar and put a piece of uh, screen over the top and rubber band over it. Yeah. All right, worms. You can get you get your live red wigglers, your composting worms. You got to be careful on buying some of these worms, so you don't accidentally get the um, the jumping worms. Jumping those worms. Things, yes, I did a live stream on it um, last year. 
the uh, the jumping worms, the the, uh, the Asian jumping worms, they basically they eat everything and kill the soil. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, it's not good. So, uh, yeah, and Shiny, Shiny's been just uh, lurking. Hey, Shiny. All right, so uh, there's different ones here. I'm thinking about getting. Um, I was looking before, and there was one that was a. Uh, Ooh, tumblers. Oh, um, I don't see it here now. It was a thousand, um, a thousand uh, worms. Yeah, I think it was, I'm not sure how it was here. It was a big one here. Okay, 500 for 36. But I think it was uh, like $45 for a thousand worms. I'm gonna have to go look, go, uh, find it here again. I think I'm gonna get that and then just divide them up against amongst all my uh, raised planter bits. So I get worms in there, so they can start doing it. Ladybugs, you can get your uh, li live ladybugs. Uh, isn't, there an, isn't there another bug like a ladybug? Looks just like it, but they're not ladybugs. Um. See if I can bring this back up here. That's beneficial. What's the other one? Uh, they didn't show it. In. Yeah, there's another one. It's instead of having the black spots, it's got the yellow spots on it. Yeah, that's uh, it. And it looks similar to uh, that. And th these are the good ones. These are the bad ones. I don't see it here, listing here. But yeah, there are. Um, the ones that look like the, the Asian something or other bug. Ah, there we go. Japanese. Japanese lantern beetle. Yes. So I'll just look here. I got lantern flies in my area. Bad. Um, uh, Yeah, I got one of those uh, propane torches that hook up to a 20-pound uh, propane thing. So oh, yeah, time I got one of those. To get out, out with that. There's a spotted lantern beetle, but there's that's nah, not that's the one a, with that's, the yellow. That's the, that, that's the nymph version of the lantern fly. First, they're, they're black with yeah. white dots, then they're red with white dots, and then they turn into the second one from the left there on the bottom. Yeah. I have those... They, they're all over the place around here. And we went out and bought two of those uh, assault guns. They're salt guns. They're like, they shoot yeah. salt? Yeah. Oh, oh, they're awesome. I got two of them. My wife, is she gets apoplectic. She loads it up. She is out here for hours shooting them. It's funny. You hit one, and you just see this red confetti flying everywhere. And, uh, oh, we probably killed probably two 3,000 of them last season. So hopefully we put a dent in the uh, the egg laying population, and we won't get as many this year. But we'll keep killing them. Yeah. So yeah, that those are all lantern flies. Now I was talking about the uh, they look just like a a uh, yeah the other one. Let's see if I can do lady ladybug. Yeah, is that ladybug? Um, uh, I know. Yeah, look alike. <laughs> hey. uh, oh. Come on. <laughs> Gotta love Google. Yeah. Multicolored Asian beetles, yellow ladybugs. Yeah, it looks yellow like yellow ladybug. Yeah, okay. Let's see if uh pull up images. Yeah. Yeah, that's it on the left top there. Yeah, it's instead instead of red, it's orange. But then right. there's also oh, here we go, boom, all sorts of different ones here. There's the yellow one down there with the black with the yellow spots. So yeah, there's uh, and some of them they get in your house. The bad ones get in your house. Yeah. Yeah. This. So if it's uh, if it's red, if it's red, it's uh. Yellow, ugly fellow, red. Don't don't you know, don't make him dead. You know whatever. Something. 
But, uh, and then of course that the head's a little bit different too. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if they're edible. Kidding. Hey, hey don't tell Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what gets me is that the uh, some idiot at the FDA or uh, or the um, the uh, the four letter uh, one. Um, having a brain fart here. A ASPCA? Just kidding. No, no. The uh, the other, uh, the food one, the other food one um, has, is allowing um, crickets. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's cricket, like... Cricket powder in your Doritos. Yep, good yes. times. Yeah. USDA. Yes, there we go. USDA. Thank you. Checked off in Shawnee. The U and, United States and, Destructive Association. And yeah. Department of Agriculture, the Food and Drug, yeah, they all just, you know, someone needs to go in there with a cricket bat and start slapping heads. Stop approving this shit. <laughs> nah, just, just release a couple hundred thousand stink bugs inside their offices. No, they'll just call it an exterminator. You, but you whack them upside the head. With a uh, with a cricket bat, it gets personal all of a sudden. They realize, oh shit, people don't like us. We're doing this, <laughs> but we were making money and getting payoffs. Okay, I'll stop. No, you're right. All right, let me be here. All right, um, I'm checking the. Uh, so so far we have twelve votes. Eight for eight. Uh, is that eight? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So eight to move uh, the the start time two hours earlier. And, I voted. I voted twice. Yeah, and uh, yeah. four to remain where it is here. That I voted here. Now I know there's been at least four votes over on the community tab because those people are not here in the chat, and they're saying that, and they're saying move it. So, so I think if you haven't voted yet, hurry up and vote so I can end the poll. Um, uh, and basically it's, you know, move it two hours earlier. So, you know, cause I know people back East have a harder time, especially those that have to get up early in the morning or just can't stay up late. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> beta Z. <laughs> Kalen, you're gonna kill me with that with those. Oh man, that was a good one. Oh wait, 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 wait a minute. An illegal alien from Venus. Oh, no problem. You know, you'll get they'll let you vote twice. Hold on, let me let me let me let me log in as my uh dead relative here and vote. <laughs> oh yeah. So now we got 13 votes. All right, now we're uh, now we got the seventy-seven percent saying yes to, to move it. All right, so yeah, um, ooh, I got I got to check with my daughter, find out um uh, her work schedule again. Uh, uh she works um. Uh, at the end of the month, I'm not sure if she's working next week or the it's or is it the following week or is it going to be like Friday of next week? The, the, I got I got to talk to her. Actually, time to communicate with my daughter in a way she gets the message. I, I remember texting my own kids when they were literally 12 feet away on the next floor up. Couldn't hear me, but you could text them. Yeah. Boom. Well, let's see. Uh, she should be up, uh, fighting to get uh, the uh, last two of the kids down. Unless Oliver had a long nap, then Oliver's going to be fighting until about 930. 
Yeah, Oliver's the youngest one, and he, he if he if he does not have a have a nap or he only has an hour nap around eleven to twelve, he goes down about eight thirty. If he has a if he goes if it's later and he winds up doing a two hour nap, he don't want to go to bed till you know 10 o'clock. I don't miss those days. I do miss those days, but I don't miss those days. What's 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 neat though, though Danny has been, has been sleeping over here quite a bit, and uh, he will like if, if he comes over after, after like uh, if he, if he was spending the night tonight. As soon as we end this, I'd go over get him, bring him back in, and he just crawl in bed with his giant Mickey Mouse there, and he's out in ten minutes. Hmm. <laughs> it's like. Yes. And the, uh, the other night he was here early. He, he came over early and he watched the movie. The movie was done. And it's like, and, and he wanted to play a little bit, played a little bit now. And then he, I go, are you going to go to bed? He goes, oh, yes. And he, whoo. And, he, and, and he's been the one, the boy, the room, one room that he's using, I put a, a, a full size bed in there. We got all the kids' toys in there and stuff. And it's, it's the kids, you know, nap room and play room. From day one, practically, he goes, this is my bedroom. <laughs> Tells his brothers, it's my bedroom. And then when he when he finally got potty trained and got the Mickey Mouse for, for you know, potty training himself, then it became definitely his bedroom. Because Mickey spends all the time on the bed in there. <laughs> yeah, so if you haven't voted, sue me. Go ahead and vote. Or think about you know, if I'm going to move the time up to move it up two hours earlier, like I do on Saturday and on Monday. So uh, just it just you know, I have a feeling it's just going to work out better. I'm just going to have to uh, play a little game thing on um, on on one Friday a month. And just make sure the kids, the grandkids are all on the far side of the there watching the video. Okay, yeah, voted. Okay, all right. What'd she say? Just got the ping. Not sure yet. Nah. Okay, she'll find out soon. <laughs> it's coming up next, you know, maybe come up next week. In any case, uh, probably we'll start, make the changeover on the third, which is the first. Um, Friday in May, so it'll change over on, on uh, May third to uh, uh, to starting at eight o'clock Eastern time, six o'clock my time, which will work great then because when I get done, then then I can go over and grab boys and bring them over. You know, they can watch a movie and then go to bed. <laughs> Hey Gil, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna log off this one. I'm gonna try it on my iPad quick and see if it works for tomorrow night. Okay. All righty, and let's see what we got here. Alternate. Oh, he's from an alternate universe, folks. I can't hear anything. So he's experimenting for his uh, for tomorrow night. Can you hear me? I can hear yeah. you now. <laughs> I got you, the fat you, raccoon going. Yeah, you're a little a little bit quieter. I don't know if you can turn up the mic volume or not. Hang on, hang on. Maybe I can do that here. Hang on. Let me see if I can do that here. I'm gonna get my, gonna get my headphone. Okay, you're you're full full volume on the uh, on it. echo cancellation is on. So we'll see if, uh, what goes. So what who what is the most the 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 biggest problem bug that you guys have out there? I, I don't know what kind of big problem I have. Uh, um, maybe white bugs. 
That's about it. Yeah. I know I have cabbage moths around. All, I mean, I just see and it's like, okay, I see them. Yes, that's a cabbage moth. But I haven't played the cabbage before. Yeah, go ahead, can, Mark. Can, can, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. A little better? Okay. I have to put my headphones on. The iPad is old. Yeah, it, it's old. It's pixelating a little bit. Yes, yeah, it's, it's sketchy. We'll see what happens tomorrow night. I'll bring my other iPad with me and see if that one works too. But anyway, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to go back to my other computer and log this one up. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Uh, squash bugs, ducks were the best solution for that. Cool. Cabbage moss, tomato horn. Tomato hornworms, we've taken care of. We used to have tomato hornworms bad in California until we started planting borage. And once the borage was planted, uh, no more tomato hornworms. Yeah, roly polies, pill bugs. Those haven't, I mean, we get them, but I'm not sure what they're what they're attacking in the in the garden. Um I know one of the uh one of the tomatoes in there, I'm not sure if those gnats that are burrowing gnats, you know, have been eating at it from under, under, under the ground or not. But one of them all of a sudden was getting really lit, was like, you know, so I, it was getting weak and stuff. So I uh, cleaned around, cleaned some of the soil around it away from it and got some uh, more dirt, dirt like soil and put around uh, right around the, uh, the stem of the tomato plant. And uh, use one of the clips to put a, I'll put a stake in there, and it's holding itself up now, and it's just starting to look better. So, and he's back. All right. Uh, that didn't work well. I think I'll just bring my computer with me. Hmm. Well, what? Um, Had a thought. Not sure if you even want to invest in this or not. Out you know, until you're out there a lot, you probably don't want to do it. But the um, what's his name? Elon Musk's. Um... Uh no. Okay. No, I got a, I got I got a hotspot. I have two. I have a work phone, a personal phone, and they both have good hotspots. I got decent signals. So we'll see what happens. I'll I'll play with it. If not, I'll just yeah watch and linger yeah. and. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things is um uh someone has gotten i guess they have several different packages for the um for skynet i mean i mean uh uh yeah. starlink <laughs> i'm a, i'm in a yeah. i'm in a valley and i have two cell towers i can see on top of both mountains so skylink starlink skynet whatever skynet. <laughs> probably won't waste my time with that Oh, oh shoot! I got, I got, I got to pull this up here. I got to pull this up for you guys. Got to pull this up here. Um. Okay. Um. Buddy across the street, Rex. There it is. Okay. This he posted this one here. And this is scary. Oh, yeah. Man, that, that hurts my hips doing watching that. <laughs> yeah. Sk yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Skynet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Big time. Yeah. So, but anyways, they have they have uh, several different packages. One package, they, they have two packages for your house, two packages to uh, mount on your RV. So yeah. it, when you're driving, you're, you know you you know drive you know you've got a little camper shell, a camp camper truck, tra RV trailer, whatever you know, and you have it set up so it'll link in when you're at home. You drive out to where you're going, and it links in as you go. 
that way you can stick the kids in the if you got a fifth wheel you can stick the kids in the back and let them play their games and stuff and it's still connected to the internet and you don't have to listen listen to are we there yet are we there yet are we there yet i i don't think that's legal to put kids in a trailer <laughs> uh, fifth wheel yeah but it's still not connected to the truck through yeah no fifth, fifth wheel has the, has the locking thing on it However, the ball one in the in the, the ball in the in the bed, no. A fifth wheel, yes. Oh, like a tractor trailer. Yes, a fifth yeah, wheel. Okay, I, I don't yeah. have that much money. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have kids while they moved out. So yeah, I've uh, seen some of those in the back of pickup trucks, and I've they're great for hauling stuff, but they weigh a ton. They're bad for gas mileage. Yeah, or diesel mileage is the case. Maybe diesel, <laughs> diesel gas. It's all the same thing. To me. Oh. Okay, so um, trying to think who, who told me was it the staff sergeant or someone else to tell me that the uh, diesel for the longest time has been more expensive than gas, and whoever was telling me they had gone this way, not, not around last here. Week. So diesel yeah. is cheaper than gas. Gas of course, is up to gas is up to about three seventy five a gallon in uh, central PA, yeah. and diesel is still like four sixty. Yeah, well, yeah, I just heard four, that. forty years ago. Forty years ago, diesel was half the price of gasoline because yeah, well, it was it, a waste fuel. And then they started making all these diesel pickups, and they oh, and the oil industry goes, ooh, ooh. Diesel pickups. Now we can jack the price up. Who who who'd have thought you'd have to uh, change your you'd you'd have to add your diesel exhaust fluid and change your muffler bearings? We that used to be a joke. Now it's almost the truth. Well, it is a truth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They. Uh... Uh, Mark. Yes. On your on your coyote. Yes. The, it doesn't take diesel exhaust fluid, does it? No, it doesn't. I'm it's a 35 horsepower. So that's the one that every whatever amount of hours the little light comes on and you can hit okay go or don't give me a little more time and it'll rev the RPMs up to uh 1250 or 1300 RPMs. You got to let it run for like 20 minutes. You know, because it makes all the the yeah. soot and then oh, let, let's burn it off and shoot it into the atmosphere anyway. Really? Yeah, yeah um, most of the tractors up thing here. on that is, if I'm using my, my my rotor killer, I'm already revved up to the max, anyways. Well, so I'm, I, when I, I'm rotor I, tilling and doing stuff. I'm have it revved up to the max, anyways. Well, my all my all my implements run at 540. So yeah. no, like if I rev, if I rev the if I rev the uh, bush hog up to the max, now nah, I'd probably be throwing 40 pound blades across the property. Actually, um, the brush hog is supposed to be. You're supposed to have it up at the. If you look on your on your on your um, tachometer, it it's got say, two five forties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but it has the little 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 itty bitty blue arrow over there at the three thousand RPMs. That's when you're getting four five hundred and forty RPMs on your on your PTO. Oh, really? Yes. Then why do I have two five forty? Okay, I'm gonna have to yell at my. Uh, my coyote guy, because I stop in there all the time to say hi. I'll yeah, to, get get clarification that. on that, because that's the way it is on mine, and that's the way it is on a couple other people's around here. You has that little blue triangle over there, about around about the 3,000, 3,200. When the, when the tachometer is at that point, you're at 540 RPMs on your uh, out the back. Well, that would explain. Well, I don't like hit, I hit a rock every now and then, and it'll it'll flip a blade back and it feels like that whole thing is about to shake itself off. But, yeah. Until, until the blade gets back in, in sync and everything. Yeah. I'll shut it down and let it slow down and it'll flip back out and I'll turn it back up again. Yeah. I'll, have to, I'll have to, uh, I have the owner's manual. Maybe I'll read it. No oh, crap. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? I thought I hit the mute button. You go, you're going to read your, you're going to lose your man card reading the owner's manual. We're going to take I, your man card away from you. I literally have it sitting in a folder in my cabin. And I've <laughs> looked at it for, you know, lube points and oil change times and all that. Yeah. And uh, maybe I should look at the, uh, thank you for giving me that one. Cause 
probably let me go a little bit quicker around the property. Two fifty per liter and beyond for diesel here in that time. Wow, that's a liter. Jeez, that's yeah. like that's like ten dollars a gallon. Uh huh. Ugh. Yeah, they just they jacked it up. The in Ontario, I know that like eighteen cents or something like that overnight. Yeah. Oh, we had to add new tax onto it because you know. Yeah. The reason reason diesel now is costing so much more is because oh wow we can charge more because there's more people that need it. No, and we have to process it and get the uh, get the sulfur out of there. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I bought a, uh, I have a 55 gallon drum of off-road diesel sitting in my container right now with stabilizer in there. Picked that up, got a wicked deal and got a free barrel and it's in there with a pump and I'm ready to go. So I'm, I probably got about a two years worth of, well, maybe a year after I get rolling. But right now I got about two years worth of diesel sitting in a bucket in a barrel in my tray in my uh, container yeah oh yeah the ain't, um ain't life grand yeah uh curtis uh, across the street here uh told me he's thinking he's uh, gonna put in a wall of peony he's gonna buy he's gonna get everything bought for it by this fall whether he puts it in or not this year but he wants to get all everything he needs do it. Put in one of his barns over there. All the pieces, all the panels, the the, the hoses for the um, geothermal on it. He's uh, picking up a. Uh, he's going to put a wood burning stove in there to help during the really cold nights we get around here. When we get when we get the uh, polar vortex, where you know throw go out there and stoke it up and then batten it down so it's putting not radiating out, out some heat in there. And he's going to get he's going to get everything together. So that um, in case the prop, uh, everything jumps in price, you know, over the winter time, mm -hmm. he has he has the stuff. But he's got he's uh, planning on putting in a uh, a big wallapini over there, and he's gonna then he's gonna sell his uh, his his forty horsepower diesel. Um, it's a Ford. He's gonna sell mm -hmm. that that tractor and all the implements. I didn't ask him how much. Uh, Why is he gonna sell it? Because he, he, he's he's doing he, what he used to do a big garden out there. He's not. His garden has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller, and he has he has um he's he built a new uh, shop for his business. Uh, he does um, restoration of old of old cars and stuff and oh, upholstery cool. work too. He has an upholstery shop now and the body shop, and uh, that's what he does. But then he also has this big uh, sawmill out there and piles and piles of big friggin' logs out there. Nice. And so he's, you know, you know, so he's cutting stuff and everything else. And he's just, he's just not into the garden stuff as, that much. He goes, if he has a, the wall of peony, he doesn't have to plant as much and then can it. Yeah. He can grow a bunch year round. And then if he has to can a little bit, they can can a little bit and not worry about it. Hmm. So that is, he's basically he's he's maximizing by minimal minimalizing his garden. Yeah, but you always need a tractor. You got to move stuff. Oh, he he has three skid steers. Uh, well, okay, that's another story. I'd love a skid steer. Forty five thousand is a little out of my price range. <laughs> yeah, he, he's picked them all up, used, worked on them, fixed them up, and he's got three of them. Now he's got a bobcat, a case, and I'm not sure what the third one is. It may be another bobcat. And of course, they all got the got the quick disconnects on the front. So he's got all these different buckets, grapples, forks, spears, you know, booms. He has a boom on one for you know, he can go in there and pick a motor out and mm -mm, grab another motor. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Ford would almost be uh, worth looking at because up here in Canada, <laughs> the '96 Ford pickup truck um, was that engine inside that tractor. Yeah. 
and it was a you could drive that drive anything with that engine and it'd still be rotting around there when that engine would still be working yeah three 351 or 302 yeah, it's a four. I know on the Ford pickup trucks, I had the, the exact engine there. It was a 96 Ford F 150 XL, and it was the 4.9 liter engine. Oh, the six, the inline six. Yep. Those mm -hmm. things are bulletproof, 200,000 miles, and you might need to change something. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No, this, this thing had been through hell and back. It was a uh, landscapers, and the body was starting to rust on it. Then, I was using it for trees, just not taking care of it, right? Like if something broke on it, um, I'd fix it, but it was still running when I had it. Like, <laughs> you look at it and say, yeah, what? <laughs> it's alive? Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I worked I on my share yes. of those. Easy to fix. Yeah. Um, so Curtis across the street here has a, a what's called a two-bottom plow. And then he has the disc set. So he'll go through and he had the two bottom plow, just, you know, two rows just turned on the soil over. Then he comes through with the disc and breaks it all up. And um, he'll get, um, he's pretty much got his soil over there all processed now over, over all the years he's been doing this. He gets um, a wood chips brought in. He gets manure from the dairy brought in. And then he turns it over with, with the two bottom plow. Then he hits it with the disc, and then he puts on his um, six-foot-wide uh, rotor tiller on it, and nice and smooth, and everything's turned in. And uh, yeah, but yeah, I tell you, know, you know, a walk-behind rotor tiller. The only place I've used a walk behind walk behind rotor tiller is going to be in the uh, right out the kitchen door here, that little garden area there. Once I get it all finished up, and once I have the uh, the fruit trees planted, I'll just I got a little electric uh, rotor tiller just to around behind things and just do stuff up, just to um, fluff the soil and uh, turn in new uh, manure and stuff into it. But I won't be using that till uh, probably for another year and a half. But. Uh, oh. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens here. Also, when I go uh, over on the the property across the street on the west side, that that side there it has a lot of um, goat heads out there. So I got to get I got to get out here uh, fairly quick here. And um, uh, before or I was, when I was running the the tractor over there, the goat heads um, aren't weren't sticking in the tires like they were last year. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to get over there and finish burning what I can between the fence and the street. Then I'm going to take, uh, I got an eight gallon um, electric uh, sprayer. I'm going to put the four gallons of, um, of the, of the 45% of, uh, vinegar in there. Cut it. So it's actually 22 and a half percent vinegar, which still makes it, Four and a half times, you know, four times more powerful than the stuff I buy at the store, and just spray the area over there to try to kill all the seeds and grasses and everything else. And then, then I will uh, rotor till it, and then I will um, give it, let it sit for one rainstorm. Actually, it probably won't take a rainstorm because once I rotor till it, all that uh, vinegar and stuff is going to react with the. The very alkali soil here, and it'll kind of it'll neutralize each other out. Hmm. And then I will, you know, uh, see get some um, Kentucky bluegrass seed and seed the whole area and put sprinklers on it because the um, come on, brain goat head does not like being watered, it likes dry soil. So if you water it a bunch and you put lawn out there, it'll Keeps several, some of the weeds don't like being watered all the time, and they don't like competing with grass. But if I can get that go, if I can get that fixed up this spring here, then I'll be a lot better over there, and I won't have the the goat heads. 
and it'll also eliminate some of the, a lot of the a lot of the uh, <coughs> oh the grasshoppers we get from the uh, the Russian bloom. Nothing likes the Russian bloom except for the uh, grasshoppers. They brought they imported it because they figured oh the goats and the cows will like it. Well, when it's when it's about this tall, yeah, the cows will munch on it. But it grows so freaking fast, all of a sudden it's this tall and the cows won't touch it once it gets more than 18 inches tall. And then it's four and a half, five feet tall. And it's, you know. <laughs> so. Oh, tomorrow's going to be a fun day. I got a lot of videos to go out there and video tomorrow doing stuff. Yeah, what's tomorrow night? Tomorrow is um, mainstream. Oh, actually, let me just bring it up here. Yeah, it's that time to tell everybody what's coming up. Coming up, anyways. Tomorrow night on Gray Man Prepping. Tomorrow night is um, mainstream media admits mind control agenda. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, there are videos out there where the uh, the newscasters start. Oh, they they blurp it, and all of a sudden they you know. <laughs> And people have saved their videos and they're going around. And it's like, oh, no, no, that's not what they meant. That's not what they meant. Yeah, it is what they meant. All right. Monday is uh, back here on Camp Patton Family Compound is um, canning fruit and nut butters. So making your different hey. butters from fruits and nuts and everything else. We're going to talk about that and canning times and non-canning times and other ways to save it. Tuesday on Tactical Tuesday, Gray Man Prepping is uh, what new skills are you learning? We're going to talk about essential skills. What skills are you learning? What skills might you think about putting on the list to learn? Uh, midnight Ride on Thursday. And then next Friday here, we're talking about your receipts. Check your receipts. Um, Crazy Squirrel sent me one. I can't believe what they did on his. It's just utterly ridiculous. And I've, I've noticed a couple I've had gone back to, hey, uh, 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 uh. I've actually you know, caught it at the uh, at the cash register. Oh, well, that's not the correct price. I go, no, that's the price you have to go by in law. You know, it's the posted price. It's the price you have to give. Oh, I can't get your manager. But uh, yeah, there's some some really. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Bring this up here. All right. Um, put this over here. Make this a little bit bigger. You ready for this? Uh, wait. Did this say what? What is that? This was that. Uh, I'm not sure what it was. But he didn't notice this till he got home. Smart ass charge. Uh huh. They actually have it at this at this place, and when someone's being someone's you know, being you know they they paint hit him for that. And most that's people a, don't catch most people don't catch it. That's kind of illegal. Oh yeah. It's like. Um, Um, Dollar General, the well, stuff they're doing is just absolutely ridiculous. And I got some emails and, and stuff on that too. Nah, it, uh, it doesn't have my name on it. If it had my name on it, it would say half ass, according to my mom. <laughs> and I tell and my mom, hey, don't do it half ass. So, what do you want? Well, I could do it whole ass. And hey, I take off running. <laughs> at least she's using your right pronouns. <laughs> but uh yeah, I think I'll put this back over here, get in the right spot. There we go. So uh, yeah, that's gonna be uh that's gonna be next uh Friday here. We're gonna talk about receipts and all the different things, the different places that people oh shop here, shop there, and you gotta you know, watch your receipts. Things are just really bad. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mark and Lewis, for coming up here. Everyone, thanks for your input yeah. on the side chat. 
and hopefully pick up a couple of interesting things. And you, hopefully you uh, – actually, let me did I throw it away? Dang it. Um, let me throw it back up here, the one link here. Of course, everyone knows on the Amazon one, but let me go here and bring up the other one again. Oh, come on. Here we go. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. There we go. Here and this here. So this is the one that Wendy Hardneck Farms mentioned. So here is the link for this one. Place to get some of the beneficial uh, insects. They got a bunch of other things on on the site too. Really cool stuff. Fly eliminators, pest controls, these disease controls, uh, grow supplies. Yeah, they got a lot of good stuff to look at over there. Hug your mothers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. Thanks for coming in. And hopefully I'll see you tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern over on Gray Man Prepping for Survival Saturday. All right. See you around. Have a good night.